Thank you for Thank joining, you for joining us. us. Thank you for joining us as we open to the energies of Taurus as an esoteric group. In part three, we consider the great teachings of Master DK in relation to the new astrology, the science of relations. On the day of the full moon in Taurus, the Buddha, the world savior in Taurus, the Lord of light and the agent of the forces of light, renewed his blessing and commitment to his brother, the Christ, the world savior in Pisces and the assembled hierarchy. The Christ, as the agent of the will to good as love and peace, brings forth from Shambhala spiritual consciousness pouring unto the buddhic and astral planes into the heart of humanity. Through the Christ and the Buddha, humanity can now establish a close relationship with Shambhala and then make its own contribution as a world center to planetary life. We move forward together under the key words and keynotes of Taurus with clear seeing, pure, joyful will, and the death of personality desire. In part one, in the days of preparation for the Vesak full moon, we explore the themes of Taurus from the planes of human experience and planetary evolution the centers and relationships for us as human beings in the development of vision through the practice of visualization and the process of meditation eventually leading to the opening of the Ajna Center. Along the path of purification and the path of probation and the path of discipleship, indicating how the energies of Taurus move humanity forward and how we develop the wisdom of the heart. In part two and continuing today with part three, with the theme of illumination, we explore the great science of relationships, the new astrology, that is gradually coming into human consciousness as tenets to follow, given to us by Master Jalkul. Today, let us contemplate what Master DK tells us regarding the highest cosmic realms of great lives and how those relate in triangles of energy through the entity of space as ray influences and qualities to our solar system, into and through planetary lives and right into the planetary logos and Sanat Kumara, to and through Shambhala, informing the purpose and then the plan, to the hierarchy, implementing the plan for the evolution of our planetary logos and the kingdoms that are evolving as integral systems in that great being in whom we live and move and have our being. We emphasize the role and place of the new group of world servers, the developing Ajna center of the planetary logos, 
ruled by Taurus and the influence of the fourth ray. In part three, we will look at the triangles involving Taurus, the fourth ray, and the planetary rulers for Taurus, all bringing illumination into our planetary life. In our opening to Pisces, we pondered DK's words. I will deal with an analysis of three groups of triangles, which are of major importance to humanity at this time, and which follow upon information earlier given. These groups of triangles emanate energies which reach through space to the individual man and therefore cannot be ignored. In Taurus, we are given other triangles to integrate in our understanding of the science of triangles and the signs of the centers and those energies flowing into the planetary consciousness. One of the major triangles given is that of the Great Bear, the Pleiades, and Sirius. In relation to Taurus, we are given another triangle, the Great Bear, the Pleiades, and Taurus, linking in another triangle to Pluto and the Earth, and eventually touching the Avatar of Synthesis and flowing into Shambhala, we also want to look at the Pleiades, Sirius, and Taurus, for Sirius has a direct line to the planetary heart center, our hierarchy, and to the heart center of every disciple. These three planetary centers, Shambhala, the developing Ajna center, the new group of world servers, and the planetary hierarchy, receive through these triangles the will to serve. Bringing purpose and direction, the will to good, to Shambhala. Illumination, the plan and divine ideas to the hierarchy. And goodwill and vision to the new group of world servers. Those three entities united impress the head, heart, and Ajna center of disciples and unite on a larger scale to influence humanity. The Great Bear, the Pleiades and Taurus. This constitutes one of the most important triangles in our entire cosmic series of relationships. And this importance is also enhanced by the fact that the eye of the bull is the eye of revelation. The underlying goal of the evolutionary process, the onward rush of the bull of God, as it is esoterically called, reveals steadily and without cessation the stupendous and sublime plan of deity. This is the subject which light reveals. Master TK gives us wonderful images and graphic uh, representations of different relationships. Let's consider these great streams that come into our system involving from Taurus in this way. 
Taurus standing for the eye of illumination or light. It is the bull's eye. The great bear and the Pleiades unite in a triangle with Taurus. And then that energy flows to another triangle involving Pluto and the Earth and directly into Shambhala. The penetrating light of the path. The Shambhala force is that which fans or intensifies the light by the removal of obstructions, pouring through the eye of illumination. The energy of will, newly released by Sanat Kumara upon our planet, emanates via the head center of the planetary logos from the Great Bear. Andrea. It is stepped down in vibration via one of the Pleiades, hence its influence upon matter and hence also its pronounced Taurian effects upon humanity, and so enters into the solar system. It is there absorbed by that major center of our planetary life, Shambhala. Thus are the purposes of deity materialized. Would you continue? The penetrating light of the path, Shambhala, the entry point for the potent energies of Taurus, which stream from the Great Bear and the Pleiades. Shambhala is the seat of will or power as the planetary head center, the center of purpose. Shambhala is the spiritual pineal gland, relating to the all-seeing eye of God, the eye of Shiva, the eye which directs the will and purposes of deity. The Tarian influence must now be regarded as being of exceeding potency today particularly from the angle of the subjective spiritual values. It is Taurus, which is the ruler and the guiding influence of that which is occurring everywhere, and the ruler of the new group of world servers. We've been shown this image of the Ajna system as it's depicted in the yogic and Vedic traditions. So let's take just a few minutes to look at the correspondences that we might draw to the teachings that we have studied with Master D.K. We're told that the Ajna center appears as an airplane with two wings right above or between the eyebrows. Then what becomes the Ajna Center awakening is part of the integrating of the personality and the development of the spiritual eye or third eye, which you'll see in the yogic depiction illuminated as that point of discrimination. As the disciple learns, develops vision, and moves forward along the path, these petals or vortices or points of force become purified and spiritualized. And as the egoic lotus and the petals of the egoic lotus open the seat of higher manas, eventually, as the disciple becomes an initiate and passes the fourth initiation, 
the Ajna center becomes the eye of the soul and is lifted into the spiritual triad and it becomes the eye of Bodhi. On the monadic plane, the monad is the eye of Shiva. We're told that the Buddha achieved nirvana, meaning that the Buddha was able to move beyond the need for service in our planetary life and yet stayed. And the one who bestows honor, the Christ, is now approaching that point and will in the next point at which the Christ is present on earth, will then go on to achieve that point that the Buddha did beyond that control of our planetary life. Shambhala, as we just heard, is the spiritual pineal gland and the great eye on the logoic plane. This eye of Shiva is far beyond our comprehension, but it is placed at the highest point in this Vedic depiction of the Ajna system. So we can track and see the progression from visualization to vision. The eye of the needle is that point at the fourth initiation where the disciple or initiate moves beyond any need for physical manifestation in an etheric body and lives on the buddhic plane. The Soma Chakra, which is, according to the Vedic tradition, a fusing chakra, fusing the left and the right of the Ajna center, the lower and the higher, is depicted in that tradition in this way. The reason that we can correlate this is the affirmations that are given in relation to work with this center. I see, I envision, I imagine, I am clear and focused. My dreams and vision guide me. I follow my intuition. I am calm and clear. My inner knowledge guides me. I trust my inner guidance. I see clearly. I am insightful. All reflect that point of fusing the left eye and the right eye into the Ajna center. We could use, and let us look carefully at words that were given by Master DK. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events and bring to light the love that underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. All reflective of this fusing of the left and right eyes. So whenever we sound the mantra of unification, we're affirming that fusion that is occurring, not only for ourselves, but when we sound it as a group, we're affirming it as one soul, as the group soul. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events and bring to light in this time, we're looking at the light of Taurus, the penetrating light. Bring to light the love that underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all people love. Yvonne. The goal of the fused and fully developed new group of world servers. Three, 
As the new group of world servers develops, the group becomes aware of the light. I refer to the light in all forms, veiled by all sheaths and expressions of divine life, and not just to the light within the new group itself. As this awareness of this light increases, so does the apparatus of vision develop, and the mechanism whereby the new group can see things in the spiritual light comes into being in the etheric body, that your knowledge may be transmuted into wisdom, and the eye of vision control your living processes, and all your undertakings is the desire deep within my heart for each and all of you, your master, friend, and teacher, the Tibetan. The eye of booty is the distributing agent for the energy of love, pure reason. The simple adaptation of DK's words, relating it to the new group of world servers, gives us a sense of how that group is to develop and that process of fusion that will eventually bring this spiritual light into the etheric body of the group and then have greater influence in awakening the soul consciousness of humanity. The third eye, or spiritual eye, is the controlling factor of the magical work. All white magical work is carried forward with a definitely constructive purpose, made possible through the use of the intelligent will. In other words, the soul knows the plan, and when the alignment is right and the attitude correct, the will aspect of the divine man can function and bring about results in the three worlds. The organ used is the third eye. The analogy to this can be seen in the often noticed power of the human eye as it controls other human beings and animals by a look and through steady gazing can act magnetically. Force flows through the focused human eye. Force flows through the focus third eye. So we can intuit from this that as the new group of world servers fuses and develops, there will be a force that flows through the Ajna center of the planetary logos, that great new group of world servers, as the focused third eye engaging and influencing humanity. We might say the new group of world servers beginning to form and develop cohesion as the Ajna Center eventually will impress humanity, the fourth ray, with the fifth ray. And at the close of the fifth root race, there will be a synthesis of the personality forces when highly developed. And this is a great directing and distributing agent, intuition. That is the goal. Mercury and Uranus play an important part for the eye of booty will open fully and the energy that will be emitted is the energy of initiation. To use the words of Taurus, I see and when the eye is opened, all is illumined, all is revealed, all is light. That is the focal point of the personality of the initiate and therefore, the personality of the new group of world servers. The new group of world servers, composed at this time of all those sensitive and consecrated servers of the race, whose objective is world peace, 
who aim at the establishing of goodwill on earth as the basis for future living and world expansion. Originally, this group was composed of a handful of accepted disciples and consecrated aspirants. Its ranks have been opened. To all those people of goodwill who are working actively for real understanding, who are willing to sacrifice themselves for the helping of humanity, and who see no separating bar of any kind, but feel yeah, alike to the there. people of all and races, wait. nationalities, and, and religions. The masses of men and women who have responded to the ideas which have been set forth and who react favorably to the objectives of international understanding, economic interdependence, and religious unity. When we think of the great triangle of the avatar of synthesis, the spirit of peace, and the Lord Buddha superimposed over the great spheres of this planetary life that represent the integration and the unity of the centers of our planetary logos, we're told by Master DK to keep in mind that the avatar of synthesis has a direct line to the new group of world servers the developing Ajna center of the planet. This group is a developing synthesis, and we know that it is ruled by Taurus. So let us be a clear and pure channel for the flow of energies wherever we may be. And looking at the upward movement from sight to visualization, Visualization now becoming embedded in the practice of men and women of goodwill everywhere and through aspirants developing the spiritual eye, which in turn leads us on the path of vision to the building of the Antikarana, using the organ of the personality. And as the Antikarana is built, the Ajna Center becoming the organ of intuition. The Antikarana built on the higher mental plane, unfolding the petals of the egoic lotus and bringing about the Ajna Center to become the true organ of vision. And then, as initiates move forward, clearing this great channel of the Antikarana. Eventually, the Ajna Center becomes the organ of idealism, wielded by higher initiates and masters to bring ideas into the consciousness of the waiting initiates and senior disciples to influence humanity. The masters in the hierarchy bringing the revelation that they receive through the eye of Shiva, the monad, and the Lord of the world down through this channel to bring us ever further along this path of evolution and draw humanity forward. So let us be a clear and pure channel for the flow of these energies that are coming through so potently in Taurus. Nicole. There is a great transference of energy from the two centers above the diaphragm, the heart and throat centers, into the Ajna center and the thousand petal lotus 
of the head. This is the second of the three great transferences or experiences. The processes involved in these three great experiences, each preceded by much testing and experiment, naturally put a strain upon the physical body and are the cause of, the, of many of the ills to which disciples fall heir. The stimulation of the Ajna center by the focusing of these energies may lead to disastrous psychological problems. A man may become egomaniac temporarily. All is temporary in the long life of the soul and become such a human monster as Hitler and others of, e of his ilk, though in lesser degree. There may be also violent conditions of epilepsy or the, eyes or the eyesight may be affected and a man may become blind. So we're careful to follow DK's instructions. Know thyself. Proceed slowly and with caution and study effects, especially as individuals. Let us take care as we move forward in anticipation of this great transference of energy that is occurring definitely within the new group of world servers. Let us consider this teaching from the higher point of contact of the Taurian energies. The Ajna Center, new group of world servers, registers or focuses the intention to create. It is not the organ of creation in the same sense that the throat center is, but embodies the idea lying behind active creativity. The subsequent act of creation producing eventually the ideal form for the idea. The Ajna, new group of world servers, is very closely related to the throat chakra, humanity. The throat chakra, humanity, is the quote, thought form making factory, end quote. When both are blended, new group of world servers and humanity, they produce the highest manifestation of the quote, fire by friction, end quote or the third aspect of divinity. The Ajna, new group of world servers, blends and fuses heart, hierarchy, and throat, humanity, energies. The Ajna, new group of world servers, expresses imagination and desire in their highest forms. Imagination and desire being the dynamic factors behind all creation. The Ajna, new group of world servers, relates to spiritual triad, hierarchy, to the personality, humanity. So consider this modification of DK's teachings. Thinking of the new group as this developing, fusing Ajna center of the planetary logos, and the relationship of that new group to humanity, the thought form making factory. I think this in a lovely way sketches out the goal for the future as the new group fuses and blends and becomes a coherent force to activate the higher in humanity by fusing heart, the hierarchy, with humanity's energies. Ninety-six lesser petals or units of force. Forty-eight plus forty-eight equals ninety-six. These do not assume the flower shape of the other lotuses. They spread out like the wings of an airplane to the right and left of the head 
and are symbolic of the right-hand path and the left-hand path, of the way of matter and the way of spirit. They constitute symbolically, therefore, the two arms of the cross, upon which the man is crucified. Two streams of energy or light placed athwart the stream of life, descending from the monad to the base of the spine and passing through the head. There is a stimulation of the will to serve and the plan that can be grasped by aspirants, disciples, and initiates from this impress from Shambhala that comes from Taurus to Pluto and the Earth. And the cautionary tale is that it also stimulates self-will or will to power in the personality. Effects of the Influx of Ray 1, the Ray of Will and Purpose from the Great Bear, via the Pleiades to Taurus and to Shambhala, that reveals, quote, the entire secret of divine purpose and planning that is hidden in Taurus, is owing fundamentally to the relation of the Pleiades to the constellation, the Great Bear, and to our solar system. It constitutes a major cosmic triangle at this time, conditioning much that is now happening. Martine? This produces much of the present world difficulty, and one which we do well to consider conditioning much that is now happening. The underlying goal of the evolutionary process, the onward rush of the will of God, reveals steadily and without cessation the stupendous and sublime plan of data. This is a subject which life reveals. The Shambhala force its effect is necessarily twofold. One, it produces in certain nations, races, and individuals a welling up of the self-will or of the will to power, which is characteristic of the developed lower nature, the personality aspect of integrated selfhood. Two, it produces, though less readily, a stimulation of the will to serve the plan as it is grasped by the world aspirants, the world disciples, and initiate. Thus are the purposes of deity materialized. So that welling up of the self-will, the will to power in nations, races, and individuals, gives us a clear picture of this developing dweller on the threshold, humanity as the dweller, and also the angel of the presence, the stimulation of the will to serve the plan grasped by the world aspirants, the world disciples, and initiates. The Eye of Shiva rules. Think of this will in relation to the new group of world servers ruled by Taurus. The energy of Shambhala is essentially the energy of life itself implemented by the will. This will is the principle of victory of the ultimate goal of life when fruition is achieved. It is the final united success or unified conformity to a long foreseen purpose of spirit matter, life form. 
plus that something which is the dream and goal of the highest initiates in the hierarchy to contact, the secret revelation of Shambhala itself. More, it is not possible to say if Christ himself is striving towards that knowledge, it is not possible for us to do more than speculate. So let us think of this will in relation to the new group and the directed purpose of the new group because its basic quality demonstrates as desire in the masses of men, but it de demonstrates as will or directed purpose in the disciple or initiate. We'll look in greater detail in the advancing as a discipleship group at this particular triangle, the triangle of Taurus, Scorpio, and Capricorn. The incentive in Taurus, the key to the testing of the disciple in Scorpio, and the ultimate liberation of the initiate in Capricorn through illumination. Yvonne. With the wisdom of the Four Noble Truths, it was the Buddha, the world savior in Taurus, who clarified for man the nature of desire and its results. Next week, we'll look further at this great triangle of experience, Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius. For in this relationship, you have a significant and important triangle as far as man is concerned, and it's peculiarly significant to the fourth creative hierarchy, the human hierarchy. So we have a triangle that expresses the life of humanity, and it demonstrates finally the perfection or consummation of the human way, or Taurus again, the incentive towards experience in order to gain knowledge, Leo, the expression of experience in order to justify knowledge, and Aquarius, the use of experience in order to make a gained knowledge a factor in service. We'll think of this and take some time to think of this particular triangle in relation to the directed purpose of the new group of world servers. These three influences we'll look at in greater detail in terms of the planetary intermediaries coming through at this time as we move through Taurus and the importance of certain conjunctions and other uh, solar systemic activities that are going on that are directly related to the new group. The Aquarian Age is coming into manifestation for our planet as a whole, bringing in its wake universal awareness and the new modes of expressing world synthesis, human interests, and the world religion. So, humanity, the world disciple, is beginning to come under the influence of Taurus. Taurus, forging the instruments of constructive living, or of destruction. Nicole. The earthy triplicity of Capricorn, Virgo, 
and Taurus form a triangle of material expression, which is of profound interest as one studies it either from the angle of the ordinary round of the zodiac, followed by the average and undeveloped humanity, or from the angle of the disciple, wherein the path of zodiacal progress is reversed. There is no denying that material expression is greatly influencing undeveloped humanity and average humanity, but also is a pull and affecting many who have stepped onto the path. The light of desire underlies the influence of all the earth signs. DK says it might be said that Taurus is the light of knowledge, the incentive behind evolution, the impulse, the desire for experience, the desire for satisfaction. And Virgo is that hidden light of God, the incentive behind discipleship, the goal, the desire for expression, spiritual desire. And Capricorn is the light of life, the incentive behind initiation and service, the desire for liberation, the desire to serve. In all the earth signs, we will find glamours that will affect and be affecting groups of all kinds at this time. Groups of ordinary humanity, groups of disciples, and even groups working in service capacity. So we look carefully at glamour and we will work through this year at the dispelling of illusion so that we can pierce this field of incentive and see the real behind the light of desire. Think of the fourth and fifth rays, the will to harmonize, the will to act in relation to the new group of world servers and the directed purpose of the new group of world servers, first ray, will to initiate. Venus rules the earth sign. It is the ordinary ruler of Taurus, the esoteric ruler of Virgo, and the hierarchical ruler in Capricorn. As we look at the planetary rulers, we're going to see the significance of the rulership of Venus in particular. Andrea? Venus, the ordinary or exoteric ruler of Taurus, is related to the fifth ray takes the man from intellect to intuition. Venus is the light bearer of our earth in both the physical and mystic sense. The pattern of Venus and the earth in their dance around the sun can be viewed as an animated building process on YouTube, creating this beautiful pattern. Let us pause briefly to contemplate the intricacies of this systemic flowering of the soul, personality, blending and fusing of Earth and Venus with this result appearing in the cosmos. The Taurian server, the new group of world servers, needs to grasp 
the spiritual side of Venus, which emphasizes that the Son of God, who is the Son of Mind, is the instrument of God's love. A new group must learn to transmute knowledge into wisdom and must transcend the destructive side of Vulcan and so of the first ray and instead work as a fashioner of souls, including one's own, and aim at clear seeing, pure, joyful will, and the death of personal desire. Catherine All is light. Vulcan is the esoteric or soul ruler of Taurus. Vulcan is the one who reveals that which is deeply hidden and brings it up into the light. Esoterically, Vulcan is the heart of the sun. Would you continue, please? All is light. Vulcan is the hierarchical ruler of Taurus. Vulcan is a substitute for the sun, either veiled by the sun or at other times it stands for the sun. It stands between the man and the sun, the soul. And further. Horus, through the esoteric ruler Vulcan, is related to the first ray, and therefore to Pisces. This is understood as transmutation of desire into sacrifice. In relation to the new group, consider this notion of sacrifice and what must be accomplished in terms of sacrifice as the new group moves forward together, fusing and blending. At the first initiation, the disciple must contend with the crystallizing and destroying forces of Vulcan and Pluto the influence of Vulcan reaches to the very depths of his nature. It is the second sign after the reorientation preceding discipleship and produces changes in opportunity for the disciple. Vulcan controls the anvil-like processes of time and strikes the blow that shapes the metal into that which is desired. First, withdraw your outgoing consciousness from the periphery to the point of silence within the head, to the place where the gold and the blue meet, blend and merge. Second, then endeavor to feel that utter silence. When you have entered into it and are aware of it, then, third, from that point send forth blessing to your immediate circle of family and friends, to your co-disciples, to your group, to the outer world, to me, your Tibetan brother, to the new group of world servers, to the hierarchy.
four. Then visualizing a vivid golden yellow, ponder on the true significance, value and reward of silence. Five. Next, visualizing a vivid electric blue, ponder on the true significance, value and reward of joy. Six. Sound the OM three times audibly, with a thought in mind as you sound it, of A. The cleansing of the aura, B. The silencing of all discords, C. The expression of joy. Take a moment and in silence visualize sound and achieve the cleansing the silencing and the expression of joy. From that point, in the center of the electric blue, see the penetrating light of the path, knowing that Taurus rules the law, all natural law, the externalization of the subjective spiritual law. And what is the role of the new group of world servers in externalization of the subjective spiritual law? After the fourth initiation, the initiate is a fusion of soul and personality through which the full life of the monad can be poured. The head center becomes the point of contact for the spiritual will, atma. The heart center becomes the agent for spiritual love, buddhi. The throat center becomes the expression of the universal mind, manas. In the work of the initiate, as he works out the divine purpose according to the plan, the Ashna Center becomes the directing agent or the distributor of the blended energies of the divine man. In the coming week, consider the importance of Venus, the fifth ray, as the ruler of the third creative hierarchy, which is the liberating light and is the light that liberates from death. Though it is one of the first five creative hierarchies and thus unmanifested and regarded as pure abstraction, Venus has great significance for us. 
in Taurus as members of the new group. Ellen. The Taurian person is under the influence, either directly or indirectly, of all the seven rays for the reason that desire leading to final illumination motivates them all. Such an amazing situation, which faces particularly the disciple or initiate who is born in this sign. And we might also speculate particularly important in relation to the new group of world servers who serve on all the seven rays. What is the nature of this particular influence? So let's look briefly at the rays that stream through Taurus and we'll go into much greater depth next Saturday when we do the advancing as a discipleship group process. Ellen, would you go forth? Taurus is related to the fourth ray, harmony through conflict, and therefore to both Scorpio and Sagittarius. And further. The triangle of the fourth ray, Taurus, Scorpio, Sagittarius, related to the fourth ray, harmony through conflict, and therefore to both Scorpio and Sagittarius. The Taurian experience involves enduring the tests and trials with the illumined mind seeing the goal and being triumphant. And again, to consider this in relation to the new group. One of the two rays of evolution, ray four, the ray of harmony through conflict, harmonizing the cosmos and the individual through conflict, producing unity and beauty the birth pangs of the second birth, the cosmic and individual Christ. Through Ray 4, we learn to be at one with this eternal synthesis and will. Ray 4, the energy of harmony through conflict. This is fundamentally the will to destroy limitation. This is not the same thing as the will to destroy or negation, as in the case of Ray 1, but is an allied aspect of that. I am not referring to the consciousness aspect, which recognizes and profits by such struggle. I am referring to the energy inherent in all forms and peculiarly strong in humanity because man is self-conscious, which produces inevitably and unavoidably the struggle between life and that which it has chosen as a limitation. This eventually shatters or breaks up that limitation the moment that a point of real harmony or at one has been reached. 
Esoterically, it might be said that the moment that form, limitation, and life balance each other, a rift immediately appears, and through it flows a fresh outpouring of the will. Christ had to die because he had achieved harmony with the will of God. And then, quote, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, unquote. The significance of this fresh inflow of the will will now appear. The stage is set anew for a fresh and renewed activity of the living principle. As far as humanity is concerned, the seeds of death emerge through the medium of this ray and the grim reaper, death, is but an aspect of this will. Conditioned by the fourth ray and emerging from the fourth plane, death is an act of the intuition transmitted by the soul to the personality and then acted upon in conformity to the divine will by the individual will. This is the will to harmonization. Today, its highest expression as regards humanity is the intuition as it works out through group activity. Death always releases the individual into the group. In Taurus, death to personality desire. As far as humanity is concerned, the sea So this intuition brings illumination, understanding, and love. For the intuition is light itself, and when it is functioning, the world is seen as light, and the light bodies of all forms become gradually apparent. This brings with it the ability to contact the light center in all forms, and thus again, an essential relationship is established and the sense of superiority and separativeness recedes into the background. This death occurs at each point when the lower bodies are purified, transmuted, and in a sense die to integration in the greater. So then as the three bodies and the integrated personality develop into that great dweller on the threshold, dies in a sense, and the angel of the presence becomes the personality, the body of the soul on the Buddhic plane. So there is this wonderful progression of what is actually called death in many ways. And it is under that law of abstraction where each body has to be surrendered and then a greater whole, a greater level of awareness, a greater span of experience is available on the higher levels. And this we know is achieved fully at the fourth initiation. Within the darkness of the soul, prisoned within the form, a point of light is seen. Then there arises all around that point a field of deepest blue, 
and this becomes irradiated by the soul, the inner sun, shining within a brilliant field of blue. The points of light become the many lines or rays of light. These lines then merge and blend until the lighted way appears before the eyes of each tired pilgrim on that way. He walks in light. He is himself the light, the light upon the way. He is the way and always walks thereon. With industry I work, as does the ant. With speed I travel, as moves the hare upon its path. With joy I climb, as does the goat, which scales the precipice and stands upon the mountain top. Industry, speed and joy must be the keynotes of my life. Diligence with the task assigned. Speed to ascend to all the Master says, speed on my way to service, and joy to shower forth on all I meet. Such is the way for me. Our Way Group Work and Group Service as Part of the New Group of world servers. For Taurus impulses the will producing movement and momentum. We are one with our group brothers and sisters and all that we have is theirs. May the love of the one soul pour forth to all. May the energy of the one soul lift and aid all. May the energy of the divine self be spread abroad in our hearts, through our groups, and throughout the world. The group meditation is of importance to you and to all the group, for it holds in it the seeds of group integration. Continue, therefore, with it. I give you, however, a brief morning exercise to be done prior to the group meditation. 1. After achieving alignment, inner poise, and rest, see each of your co-disciples, whom you may know, in the light. 2. Then visualize them each with a star between the eyebrows as the symbol of an awakened Ajna center and of an integrated personality. It is a four-pointed star. The star of initiation is, as you know, a five-pointed star. Three. Then say something to each of your brothers and sisters after due effort to link up with them. Study the ideas which give utterance to your words and note in writing their general import. Four, then rise and going to the window, send out love and light to those who guide the destinies of men and women upon the earth. I refer not to the hierarchy in London, Moscow, Washington, Geneva, Beijing, and in Darjeeling. Do this with as much love as you can and without much thought, for thought can be separative and critical where there is not adequate knowledge. This is an initial part of the technique of dissipating group glamour. Five, then sound the Om, raising your consciousness and coming as close to the hierarchy as possible.
and let us vision standing as members of the new group of world servers. As the liberated Torian is ever a constructive, planning, creative, forward-moving force greatly needed in these serious days of readjustment and strain. Nicole? The nurse sign. Taurus requires the working out of the plan or the fulfillment of desire which must be carried out upon the outer plane of living. This will or desire must express itself in the plane of outer living and in the environment where it is the environment, whether it is the environment of the individual, of a nation, or of a group of nations. <clears throat> And as a reminder to us, for those of you who are working with the souls of nations, that China has a Taurus rising sign and first ray soul. And during this time, we may wish to align the triangles that we do in our meditations to bring that great power of the avatar of synthesis, the spirit of peace in the Lord Buddha, into and through Shambhala hierarchy and humanity through the Christ, and recognize the triangle of all initiates who have passed the third initiation, which is the combined head centers of crown and ajna with the point of the heart and the point of the throat, as well as the triangle of all our developing groups, head, heart, and ajna, to bring to light the spiritual eye within those who are working to advance all people of goodwill in the nation of China and bring to light the love that underlies the happenings of the time so that their vision may come and influence all that is happening in terms of that great nation's impact at this point in time on the rest of the world. So we focus, step down, vitalize and direct the spiritual eye to assist men and women of goodwill in China. With clear seeing, pure joyful will, and death of personality desire. Let us begin forging the instruments of constructive living as we look to the light of the path from the mountaintop and breathe the wisdom of the masters into our very being, going forth in the illumined clear air of Venus and the pure joyful will of Vulcan fused as solar fire, creating the key which unlocks the mystery of life. The entire secret of divine purpose and planning is hidden in this sign. 